The Norman conquest of southern Italy spanned most of the 11th and 12th centuries, involving many battles and independent conquerors. Only later were these territories in southern Italy united as the Kingdom of Sicily, which included the island of Sicily, the southern third of the Italian peninsula, the archipelago of Malta in parts of North Africa. Immigrant Norman brigands acclimatized themselves to the mezzo Giorno as mercenaries in the service of Lombard and Byzantine factions communicating news swiftly back home about opportunities in the Mediterranean. These groups gathered in several places, establishing fiefdoms and states of their own, uniting and elevating their status to de facto independence within 50 years of their arrival. Unlike the Norman conquest of England, which took a few years after one decisive battle, the conquest of southern Italy was the product of decades and a number of battles, few decisive. Many territories were conquered independently, and only later were unified into a single state. Compared to the conquest of England it was unplanned and disorganized, but equally complete. Arrival of the Normans in Italy, 999-1017 The earliest reported date of the arrival of Norman knights in southern Italy is 999, although it may be assumed that they had visited before then. In that year, according to several sources, Norman pilgrims returning from the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem via Apulia stayed with Prince Guimar III in Salerno. The city and its environs were attacked by Saracens from Africa demanding payment of an overdue annual tribute. While Guimar began to collect the tribute the Normans ridiculed him and his Lombard subjects for cowardice, and they assaulted their besiegers. The Saracens fled, booty was confiscated and a grateful Guimar asked the Normans to stay. They refused, but promised to bring his rich gifts to their compatriots in Normandy and tell them about possibly lucrative military service in Salerno. Some sources have Guimar sending emissaries to Normandy to bring back knights. And this account of the arrival of the Normans is sometimes known as the Salerno tradition. The Salerno tradition was first recorded by Amartus of Monte Cassino in his Histoire de la Normande between 1071 and 1086. Much of this information was borrowed from Amartus by Peter the Deacon for his continuation of the Chronicon Monasterii Cassinensis of Leo of Ostia, written during the early 12th century. Beginning with the Annal Ecclesiastici of Baronius in the 17th century, the Salernitine story became the accepted history. Although its factual accuracy was questioned periodically during the following centuries, it has been accepted by most scholars since. Another historical account of the arrival of the first Normans in Italy, the Gargano tradition, appears in primary chronicles without reference to any previous Norman presence. According to this account Norman pilgrims at the shrine to Michael the Archangel at Monte Gargano in 1016 met the Lombard Melus of Bari, who persuaded them to join him in an attack on the Byzantine government of Apulia. As with the Salerno tradition, there are two primary sources for the Gargano story. The Gesta Robert T. Wiscardi of William of Apulia and the Chronica Monasteri I.S. Bartholomew de Carpenetto of a monk named Alexander, written about a century later and based on William's work. Some scholars have combined the Salerno and Gargano tales, and John Julius Norwich suggested that the meeting between Melis and the Normans had been arranged by Guimar. Melis had been in Salerno just before his visit to Monte Gargano. Another story involves the exile of a group of brothers from the Drengut family. One of the brothers, Osmond or Gilbert, murdered William Repostel in the presence of Robert I, Duke of Normandy after Repostel allegedly boasted about dishonoring his murderer's daughter, threatened with death. The Drengut brother fled with his siblings to Rome and one of the brothers had an audience with the Pope before joining Melus of Barry. Amartus dates the story to after 1027 and does not mention the Pope. 
According to him, Gilbert's brothers were Osmond, Ranulf, Askletine and Ludolf. Rapostel's murder is dated by all the chronicles to the reign of Robert the Magnificent and after 1027. Although some scholars believe Robert was a scribal error for Richard, the earlier date is necessary if the emigration of the first Normans was connected to the Drengits and the murder of William Ripostel. In the histories of Ralph Glaber, Rogulfus leaves Normandy after displeasing Count Richard. The sources disagree about which brother was the leader on the southern trip. Orderic and William of Jumiges, in the latter's jester Norman Aurum Ducum, name Osmond, Glaber names Rudolf, and Leo, a Martis and Adhemar of Chaban name Gilbert. According to most southern Italian sources, the leader of the Norman contingent at the Battle of Cunha in 1018 was Gilbert. If Rudolf is identified with the Rudolf of Amateur's history as a Drangut brother, he may have been the leader at Cannae. A modern hypothesis concerning the Norman arrival in the Mezzogiorno concerns the chronicles of Glaber, Adhemar and Leo. All three chronicles indicate that Normans under Rodulfus, fleeing Richard II, came to Pope Benedict VIII of Rome. The Pope sent him to Salerno to seek mercenary employment against the Byzantines because of the latter's invasion of papal Beneventan territory. There, they met the Beneventan primates. Landolf V of Benevento, Pandolf IV of Capua, Guimar III of Salerno and Melus of Bari. According to Elio's chronicle, Rudolf was Ralph of Tosni. If the first confirmed Norman military actions in the south involved Melus mercenaries against the Byzantines in May 1017, the Normans probably left Normandy between January and April. Lombard Revolt, 1009-1022 on 9 May 1009, an insurrection erupted in Bari against the Cataponate of Italy, the regional Byzantine authority based there. Led by Melus, a local Lombard, the revolt quickly spread to other cities. Late that year the Kate Pino, John Kirkewers, was killed in battle. In March 1010 his successor, Basil Macedonites, disembarked with reinforcements and besieged the rebels in the city. The Byzantine citizens negotiated with Basil and forced the Lombard leaders, Melus and his brother-in-law Datus, to flee. Basil entered the city on the 11th of June 1011, re-establishing Byzantine authority. He did not follow his victory with severe sanctions, only sending Melus a family to Constantinople. Basil died in 1016, after years of peace in southern Italy. Leo Tornikios Contorlian arrived as Basil's successor in May of that year. Tornikios sent an army, led by Leo Pashnos, against the Lombard-Norman coalition. Pashnos and Melus met on the Fort Aura at Arenula. The battle was either indecisive or a victory for Melus. Tornikios then took command, leading his forces into a second encounter near Servita. This second battle was a victory for Melus, although Lupus Protospartharius and the anonymous chronicler of Barry recorded a defeat. A third battle took place at Vacarisha, the region from the Fort Ori to Trania was in his hands, and in September Tornikios was replaced by Basil Boannus. According to Imartus, there were five consecutive Lombard and Norman victories by October 1018. At Bo Ioanna's request, a detachment of the elite Varangian Guard was sent to Italy to fight the Normans. The armies met at the Afanta near Cunha, the site of Hannibal's victory over the Romans in 216 BC, and the Battle of Cunha was a decisive Byzantine victory. Amatus wrote that only 10 Normans survived from a contingent of 250. After the battle, Ranulf Drengert was elected leader of their company. Bo Ioannis protected his gains by building a fortress at the Apennine Pass, guarding the entrance to the Apulian Plain. 
In 1019 Troia was garrisoned by Bo Ioanna's Norman troops, an indication of Norman willingness to fight on either side. With Norman mercenaries on both sides, they would obtain good terms for the release of their brethren from their captors regardless of outcome. Alarmed by the shift in momentum in the south, Pope Benedict went north in 1020 to Bamberg to confer with Holy Roman Emperor Henry II. Although the emperor took no immediate action, events the following year persuaded him to intervene. Bo Ioannis marched on Datus, who was garrisoning a tower in the territory of the Duchy of Gaeta with papal troops. Datus was captured and, on 15 June 1021, received the traditional Roman pina color. He was tied up in a sack with a monkey, a rooster and a snake and thrown into the sea. In 1022, a large imperial army marched south in three detachments under Henry II, Pilgrim of Cologne and Popo of Aquileia to attack Troia. Although Troia did not fall, the Lombard princes were allied with the empire and Pandolf removed to a German prison. This ended the Lombard revolt. Mercenary service 1022-1046 in 1024, Norman mercenaries under Ranulf Drengert were in the service of Guimar III when he and Pandolf IV besieged Pandolf V in Capua. In 1026, after an 18-month siege, Capua surrendered and Pandolf IV was reinstated as prince. During the next few years Ranulf would attach himself to Pandolf, but in 1029 he joined Sergius IV of Naples. In 1029, Ranulf and Sergius recaptured Naples. In early 1030 Sergius gave Ranulf the county of Averso as a fief, the first Norman lordship in southern Italy. Sergius also gave his sister, the widow of the Duke of Gaeta, in marriage to Ranulf. In 1034, however, Sergius's sister died and Ranulf returned to Pandolf, according to Amartis for the Normans never desired any of the Lombards to win a decisive victory, in case this should be to their disadvantage. But now supporting the one and then aiding the other, they prevented anyone being completely ruined. Norman reinforcements and local miscreants, who found a welcome in Ranulf's camp with no questions asked, swelled Ranulf's numbers. There, Amatus observed that the Norman language and customs welded a disparate group into the semblance of a nation. In 1035, Tancred of Oatval's three eldest sons arrived in Aversa from Normandy. In 1037, or the summer of 1038, Norman influence was further solidified when Emperor Conrad II deposed Pandolf and invested Ranulf as Count of Aversa. In 1038 Ranulf invaded Capua, expanding his polity into one of the largest in southern Italy. In 1038 Byzantine Emperor Michael IV launched a military campaign into Muslim Sicily, with General George Maniacus leading the Christian army against the Saracens. The future King of Norway, Harald Hardrada, commanded the Varangian Guard in the expedition and Michael called on Guimar IV of Salerno and other Lombard lords to provide additional troops for the campaign. Guillermo sent 300 Norman knights from Aversa, including the three Hortville brothers. William of Hortville became known as William Bras de Fer for single-handedly killing the Emir of Syracuse during that city's siege. The Norman contingent would leave before the campaign's end due to the inadequate distribution of Saracen loot. After the assassination of Catapan Nikephorus Okeanos at Ascoli in 1040 the Normans planned to elect a leader from among themselves, but were bribed by a Tenyulf, Prince of Benevento to elect him instead. On 16 March 1041, near Venosa on the Olivento, the Norman army tried to negotiate with Catapan Michael Okeanos, although they failed. They still defeated the Byzantine army in the Battle of Olivento. On 4 May 1041 the Norman army, led by William Iron Arm, defeated the Byzantines again in the Battle of Montemaggiore near Cane defeated Byzantine Catapan ex Augustus Bo Ioannis and brought him to Benevento. Around that time, Guimar IV of Salerno began to attract the Normans. 
In February 1042, Atenulf negotiated the ransom of Exorgustus and then fled with the ransom money to Byzantine territory. He was replaced by Argyrus, who was bribed to defect to the Byzantines after a few early victories. The revolt, originally Lombard, had become Norseman in character and leadership. In September 1042, the three principal Norman groups held a council in Melfi which included Ranulf Drengut, Guimar IV and William Ionarm. William and the other leaders petitioned Guimar to recognize their conquests, and William was acknowledged as the Norman leader in Apula. He received the title of Count of Apulia from Guillermo and was his vassal. Guimar proclaimed himself Duke of Apulia and Calabria, although he was never formally invested as such by the Holy Roman Emperor. William was married to Gida, strengthening the alliance between the Normans and Guimar. At Melfi in 1043, Guimar divided the region into twelve baronies for the Norman leaders. William received Ascoli, Ascletine Drengit received Asarenza, Tristan received Montepelloso, Hugh Tarbuff received Monopoly, Peter received Trana, Drogo of Hortville received Venosa and Ranulf Drengit received Siponta and Monte Gargano. During their reign William and Guimar began the conquest of Calabria in 1044 and built the castle of Stridula. William was less successful in Apulia, where he was defeated in 1045 near Taranto by Argyrus. At William's death, the period of Norman mercenary service ended with the rise of two Norman principalities owing nominal allegiance to the Holy Roman Empire, the County of Aversa and the County of Apulia. County of Melfi, 1046-1059. In 1046 Drogo entered Apulia and defeated the Catapan, Eustathius Palatinos, near Taranto while his brother Humphrey forced Barry to conclude a treaty with the Normans. Also that year, Richard Drengut arrived with 40 knights from Normandy and Robert Giscard, Hotville arrived with other Norman immigrants. In 1047 Guimar gave him his daughter, Gaitel Grammar, in marriage. Emperor Henry III confirmed the county of Aversa in its fidelity to him and made Drogo his vassal, granting him the title Dux a Magister Italia Comesque Norman Aurum Totius Apulire Calabre. Henry did not confirm the other titles given during the 1042 council. He demoted Guillermo II, Prince of Salerno, and Capua was bestowed upon Pandolf IV for the third time. Henry, whose wife Agnes had been mistreated by the Beneventans, authorized Drogo to conquer Benevento for the imperial crown. He did so in 1053. In 1048 Drogo commanded an expedition into Calabria via the valley of Crata, near Cosenza. He distributed the conquered territories in Calabria and gave his brother, Robert Giscard, a castle at Scriblar to guard the entrance to the recently conquered territory. Giscard would later abandon it for a castle at San Marco Argentano. Shortly thereafter he married the daughter of another Norman lord, who gave him 200 knights. In 1051 Drogo was assassinated by Byzantine conspirators and was succeeded by his brother, Humphrey. Humphrey's first challenge was to deal with papal opposition to the Normans. The Norman knights' treatment of the Lombards during Drago's reign triggered more revolts. During the unrest, the Italo-Norman John, abbot of Fecamp, was accosted on his return trip from Rome. He wrote to Pope Leo IX. The hatred of the Italians for the Normans has now reached such a pitch that it is almost impossible for any Norman, albeit a pilgrim, to journey in the towns of Italy, without being assailed, abducted, robbed, beaten, thrown in irons, even if fortunate enough not to die in a prison. The Pope and his supporters, including the future Gregory VII, called for an army to oust the Normans from Italy. On 18 June 1053, Humphrey led the Norman armies against the combined forces of the Pope and the Holy Roman Empire. At the Battle of Civitate the Normans destroyed the papal army and captured Leo IX, imprisoning him in Benevento. 
Humphrey conquered Aurea, Nardo, and Lecce by the end of 1055. In 1054 Peter II, who succeeded Peter I in the region of Trana, captured the city from the Byzantines. Humphrey died in 1057, he was succeeded by Giscard, who ended his loyalty to the empire and made himself a papal vassal in return for the title of duke.